So my name's Wing Commander Rick People. I'm the commanding officer of One Squadron. I've been flying the Super Hornet now. I, I did my training over with the US Navy back in 2009, and I've spent most of uh, that time since then flying the Super Hornet. And before you got onto the Super Hornet, what aircraft type were you flying? So I joined the Air Force back in 1997 and went through pilot's course and was successful to get into the fast jet stream and the first platform that I got onto was the F-111 and I spent nine years flying that, that aircraft until the end of 2008. And so in comparison to the F-111, how does the Super Hornet compare? Yeah, so the F-111 and the Super Hornet are generations apart. The, Old F-111 was built back in the 50s, or designed in the 50s, built in the 60s, and we took delivery of it in 73. It did a fantastic job in the years that we had it. However, it was starting to get old, it was taking a lot of effort to keep that aircraft flying, and we needed to improve our capabilities and, and move on, and certainly get ourselves positioned well to transition into the likes of the F-35 Lightning, uh, which is a spectacular aeroplane, uh, and is now coming into service uh, inside of our combat group. The Super Hornet brings with it some spectacular capabilities, things like the AESA radar, uh, the integrated cockpit and the way that the pilot and weapon systems officer work in that tactical environment has certainly positioned ourselves well for the transition into that modern fifth generation fight that we're, uh, we're training for now. Now, seeing as the F-11 had TFR and uh, payback, with the introduction of the Super Hornet, has that capability been lost or has it been replaced? So the environment that we're training for these days doesn't lend itself to, to require that low level capability so much anymore. Now we still do some low level training, however with the technologies and the capabilities that we have on board our fighter fleet these days, we can stay up at altitude and we don't need to hide. So the mindset back in the 111 era was that we had to hide below radars, we had to sneak around at low level at night that's gone away with the ability and certainly as we transition into that that stealth fifth gen capability we can stay up at altitude and, and people can't see us just through the technologies and the, the design of the airframe so the low level terrain following radar piece was certainly valid back in the day but it's it's not something that we need to train to these days so we spend most of our time up at altitude so from coming coming from the f-11 world into the super hornet what are they like to fly What's the differences? So a lot of people have asked me that question, do I miss the F-111? It's, I guess I refer to it as, it's like the first car that you ever owned. You've got lots of fond memories of it. It did a great job to get you through those first years of, of your, your driving uh, experience. But when the, the boss is gonna give you the latest company car with all the modern options and stuff, which is what the Super Hornet is, uh, you don't ever necessarily want to go back and fly. There are some, some things that the old F-111 used to be able to do that were great, that the Super Hornet can't do. But in terms of operating it in the modern environment, I would never want to go uh, downrange without having the Super Hornet. And now with the uh, railroad service, how, how is that helping you a to, to achieve what, you, what goals you have within the squadron and the wing? Yeah, so the Growl is an absolute game changer for us, uh, both in the Super Hornet world, the Classic, which is obviously on its way out, uh, but certainly even into the F-35 world. Having the ability to take the Growler and integrate it into our packages to provide that suppression of radar systems and, and other capabilities that are looking to try and detect and target us, uh, it increases our lethality uh, exponentially, uh, to be honest, uh, and even into the likes of that, that fifth generation low observable platform, having a growler in the package just makes those guys even more uh, more lethal than they, they already are. And what do you love about flying the Super Hornet? Is there something that really, I mean like, in, again back to the F-111, like I say flying the F-111 you'll you know, swing the wings or do dub and burn, what do you love about flying the Super Hornet? So the Super Hornet is, is one of the most manoeuvrable platforms around and certainly the, the people here at the air show will get to see that this afternoon. Uh, the performance, the power that you have in that aeroplane, the ability to manoeuvre the jet against an adversary is, uh, is just outstanding and it's certainly a, uh, a great aeroplane to fly. Right, so and in closing, uh, for any uh, young kids out there wanting to join the Air Force, what advice would you give them? It's one of those things, if you've got a passion for aviation, if you, if you love flying, if you want to make a difference, uh, then the Air Force is certainly the place to go. We give our members the best training, whether it's 
the, the junior technicians that come into the squadron and are, and are working to, to maintain the aeroplane, they get to uh, be trained to the, to the highest of standards and they get to work on some of the most impressive machines uh, anywhere in the country. For the air crew, there is nothing like flying a Super Hornet and it gives you the ability to, to make a difference um, here in our country, to take that capability and be trained to a point where you're ready to, to use it if you're ever asked to, uh, is, is like nothing else.
maintain, uh, as well as you know a, a fighter that can still be on the front line. US two. Yeah. Same thing. Twenty five. Uh, yeah, that's right. So as CT was mentioning with the classic, you can go up to around fifty off the combat scenario. Yesterday, you have to ask again today. Now we've had Twinkle, we've had uh, a whole lot of Caltech, 